Okay, so today we'll expand our user blueprint to handle user authentication. All right. So currently, after the end user submits the form with his or her login credentials, we are simply verifying that the username and password are equal to admin. And if the credentials are correct, the user is then redirected to this main URL here. And it's associated with that home view function. And a session cookie is also set in the browser indicating that the user is logged in. And if the credentials are incorrect, the template is re-rendered with an error message. And although this is a fairly standard workflow, we still need to make a few changes. So let's start by setting up a better form using Flask WT Forms. So within your terminal, let's go ahead and activate the virtual environment. So work on Discover Flask. And then we need to install Flask WT Forms with pip. pip install Flask WTF. All right, now we can do pip freeze. So we can add it to the requirements file. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add a form to the user blueprint. We can cd into the project, and then uh, cd into the user's blueprint. Okay, so I'm gonna do touch forms.py. Actually, let's do form.py. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with our imports. So, flat, so from Flask WTF import. And then from WT forms, let's import text field as well as the password field and text field to camel case. And from WT forms dot validators, let's import the data required validator. All right. Now let's create our form class. So class. Let's call it uh, a login form. And then let's have a username field. So that's going to be a text field. Let's just call it username. And we'll put a validator on here. You add these to an array, or I'm sorry, a list. So we say data required. All right. Okay, so this should be fairly straightforward. And if you do have specific questions, be sure to consult the Flask um, WTF documentation, which you can find right here. And again, a link for this will be within the video's description. Okay, now we need to update the login view function within the user's blueprint. So let's start by creating a instance of the login form. So we can just call it form equals login form request form and this form is just going to get passed into the template so form equals form and we need to make sure that we import the login form so from forms import the login form okay next let's go ahead and add Another conditional here, another if statement. So if form dot validate on submit, it gets tabbed over. And then we need one more else in here. So if it doesn't get validated, we want to render another template. Again, pass in the form, then we're going to pass in the error. So 
When a user submits the form, it's going to be processed with that validate on submit method, meaning it grabs the submitted values, compares them to any validators associated with the form fields, and then returns either true or false depending on that outcome. And in this case, we're just using a validator to ensure that the field is not empty, so the data required validator. So this conditional will obviously return true as long as the fields are not empty. So if you're curious about other validators, I would skip the Flask WT form documentation. This is actually pretty bad. I guess to be fair, that extension is built on top of WT form, so you could always check their docs or Google or Stack Overflow, of course. So if you want to take a look at other validators, you can find them here. So there's the data required. Uh, this, this one just validates that it's an email address. Uh, let's see what else. An IP address, certain length, etc. Okay, so next let's go ahead and update the markup in the login.html template, the user's blueprint, so login.html. And for the sake of time, let's just grab this code from the repository. So discover flask and project users templates login.html. Go ahead and copy this and then paste this in here. Okay, so here we're basically using Flask to help us render the form rather than creating our own like we were doing before. And the, the biggest dif difference, I guess, are the, the errors. So if a form does not validate, that is the validate on submit method returns false, then we re-render the template and pass in the appropriate errors. You can see the conditional here, so checking to see if there's any users associated with this username input, and then we're looping through the errors there in case there are more than one. And so this just gives the user information as to why they weren't logged in. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and run a test. So we can run the server. Okay. Python manage.py run server from forms input login form. It's actually from form. Okay. No module name flast WTF. So form.py typos. Okay, hopefully that's it. All right, cool. Let's check out localhost 5000. Okay, let's first log in with the correct credentials. So admin, and admin, and let me log out. And now let's try logging in without entering anything. So those are the errors that I spoke about a second ago. Okay, so far so good. So let's try logging in with using incorrect credentials. So I will test and test. Okay, so we got error and valid credentials. Try again. And how about if we use the correct username with the wrong password? And again, invalid credentials. Please try again. Okay, so going back to our code here, let's look at the views. We need to do a, a quick refactor to test the user credentials in the database rather than just this one user, this admin user. So let's start with um, updating our imports. So from models, let's go ahead and import to the user model. So the form validates, we want to grab the username and then pass it into a query to check the database just to make sure that user exists. So we can sign a variable name here to user and we can say user query filter and then we want to go ahead and pass in 
the username from the form. So request.form username. And then of course dot first. Okay, so now let's change up this conditional here. So let's say if user is not none and now we want to verify the password. So bcrypt check underscore password is hash. We want to pass in the password from the database. So user dot password. And then we want to pass in the password that the user inputted from the form. Okay, so then we can get rid of this conditional, and then we can clean this up just a little bit. So let me actually move this error here, move it down here, and so if the user exists, we're going to create this section cookie, we're going to flash you were logged in, and then we're going to redirect them to the main URL that's associated with this home view function. Then we can grab the else here. Else, we're going to have the same error there. And let me check what's going on here. Okay, the, the line is too long. And we also need to import uh, bcrypt. So that comes from the model as well. Okay, let's go ahead and test this again. Okay, so I'm getting this error here for models import user bcrypt. Let's see what's going on here. So from models import user, and actually this is going to be from project.models. Okay. Okay, so let's test this again first. Let's go ahead and test the write credentials. So admin, admin. Okay, an issue with our query here. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, pass that in like this. So name equals request.form. So name, that's going to be associated with our models. And you can see their name. Okay. Okay, let's try that again. So admin and admin. Okay, so we're logged in. All right, again, let's go ahead and test a wrong username and a wrong password. So test and test again. Okay, nothing happened. It didn't pass in the error though. Let's see. Let's check and see what's going on with that in a second. Now we test the right username for the wrong password. So admin and test. Okay, let's see what's going on with the else here. Okay, this actually needs to be tabbed over one, it looks like. I think that should work. Okay, so there, there we go. And let's test the right username and the wrong password. Get the same thing. Okay. Looks good. How about we go ahead and run our test suite now? It's in this directory. So, okay, yeah, Python test.py. Okay, so now we are getting four failures. Oops. Well, we've, we've actually been needing to address this for a while now. So that's exactly where we'll pick up next time. And by the way, if you do want to challenge Try refactoring the test suite on your own. If I had to guess, I imagine these tests are breaking due to bcrypt. And you may have noticed that we are actually hashing the passwords in our models.py. So right here. And then we're checking the hash password within our views. And it's probably best to handle all this in the model. So that will, that will probably be something that we're going to be refactoring next time as well. 
So I will see you then, and thanks for watching.